If I want to use vectors, uh, I do it this way. Suppose I leave after this lecture, suppose you leave and you go to the administration building, Larry, one of the greatest teachers ever to walk the planet just walked in the back oh, of the room. <laughs> good to have you here, Larry. Yeah, good to be here. Um, suppose after class you go to the administration building to pay your fees, and then after that you go to your lab over in the AJM Johnson building. Well, if the TAs for your lab leave the physics building, and there's the plus sign right there. When you add vectors, you stack them, head to tail, head to tail, okay? Now, if I have a vector B, and let's say its magnitude is three, and I have a vector A whose magnitude is four, if I ask what is A plus B, you'd like to say three plus four is equal to seven, but you'd be wrong. That's not vector addition. With vector addition, you have to take one of those vectors and move it without changing its length or direction and stack it head to tail. And then the sum, the resultant vector, is the vector that goes from the first starting place to the last ending place as the crow flies. Now, it doesn't matter whether I take A and add B to that or whether I take B and add A. Here I started with A, and then I added B. Here I started with B, and then I added A. Either way, I get the same result. So I can commute when I'm adding vectors. Now, I can add a lot of vectors. I can take the vector A, and I can add, there's the plus sign, the vector B, and then I can add, there's the plus sign, the vector C, I can add the vector D, the total sum is just from the first starting place to the last ending place as the crow flies. Okay. Look at those vectors for a moment. What can you tell me about the magnitude of those vectors? Are any of the vectors the same magnitude? Yes. Which ones? A, B, and C. And it looks like D is about twice as long as the others. Now, this arrow over here tells me that it's a vector quantity. The bars on the side indicate that I'm only interested in the magnitude, always a positive value, uh, the strength. Okay, if it's a force, it would be how many pounds it is. If it was a, uh, a velocity, it would be how many miles per hour. I hope this is boring to you. What about the direction? The direction I see, A is in the opposite direction of C, and D is in the opposite direction of B. And so that minus sign is what reverses the direction. Now, we often use a grid to help us visualize this a little bit better. If I put those vectors all starting from the same origin, it's clear to see that C is minus A. It's a little harder to see that D is minus two times B, but you, I think you can, uh, you can see that it, it looks that way. Okay, so we get the same relationships that we got before. Now here's a sample problem. Okay, let's just see if we can do it. In the morning you walk three blocks east and eight blocks north. In the afternoon you walk two blocks east, three blocks south. What is your total displacement, distance, and direction? What's the resultant vector? Magnitude and direction. So with your neighbor, come up with an answer. I'll wait. I'm sorry? Is the afternoon walk from where you... Yep, you just sit down on the curb for a little while and rest, and then you get up and start from there. Okay, some of you got to the answer really quick, and some of you are high center. And the difference between those two groups is some of you have used a grid. 
If I do this on a coordinate system, my first walk, I go three blocks east and eight blocks north. The second walk, I go two blocks east and three blocks south. What we're looking for is this red vector right there. <coughs> now folks, pay attention. This is the most common mistake people make on the first midterm. They try to do their trig with that triangle. Well, you're not guaranteed that that's going to be a right triangle. Indeed, if I had had three walks in this problem instead of two, that wouldn't even be a triangle. The triangle you always look for is the triangle that's made up of the vector and its components. Its x part is 5 to the east. Its y part is 5 to the north. That's the triangle, the red triangle, that you want to use. And now we're solving that second trick problem we talked about, where we find the uh, total displacement, the magnitude of that vector, using Pythagorean theorem. And then we find that angle using the inverse tangent. Now, Pythagorean theorem is going to give me a value of square root of 50, 7 and change. What angle is that going to be? 45 degrees. Yeah, you can tell that it's going to be 45 degrees, but if this were a harder problem, you'd just use the inverse tangent to find out what it was. And in this case, I would describe that as 45 degrees north of east. The most important word there is of. That tells you what your reference is. East is my reference direction. From east, I can either go north or I can go south. This tells me I should go north of east. Well, how much? A little bit? A lot. 45 degrees north of east. I could also have written this as 45 degrees uh, east of north. In this particular example, I get the same angle.